Hey, this is Steve with Raybuck. So this is my 54 Chevy. I got it uh, earlier in the year. One of the things I noticed when I got the car is it's got original leaf springs, original suspension all the way around. So we'll put a 350 in and a 350 in it. The car runs really well, but when you give it gas or let off, it does this. It has like a little bit of a squat, a little bit of a lean to it. Almost like a half of like a Carolina squat, uh, unintentional. So what we're gonna do is just replace the leaf springs. I got a set of uh, chassis engineering leaf springs. Uh, they're direct bolt on. You essentially just cut the rivets out or burn the rivets out of the old ones. Take everything off, bolt the new ones on, put it up in there. It's going to lower the car um, a little bit. Right now, someone has some lowering blocks in, so I'm hoping to be able to take those out because uh, they're only about two inches, and the new leaf springs will take it down about two. But the biggest thing is I want to get that uh, get it leveled out so that when you're driving, obviously it's stable. So if Matt's in here, I'm going to tell him to give it a little bit of gas. We're going to see how this thing squats. So if you have a vehicle that's doing the same thing, it's a pretty simple swap, uh, just putting a new set of leaf springs in. Okay, Matt, give it some gas and see if we There you go, a little bit more. Yeah, perfect. So as you can see, the car's squatting a little bit, and that's only with it sitting here doing like a half of a brake stand. When that thing's driving, it's dipping all the way down to the point where the uh, pinion is uh, every once in a while smacking up against the floor, um, which obviously that needs to be corrected too. Someone has the pinion on the wrong angle. But it's way too much of a squat. We're gonna pull in the garage, and as we replace it, we'll go through all the parts and uh, show you guys how we did it. So I got the 54 down in the garage, got it up on blocks in the front, jack stands in the back, just up on the frame rail, back behind the leaf springs, gives us plenty of room to work on everything that's up in here. Uh, you can see, looks like we're working with a fairly original setup. Uh, I think this rear end was probably out of something else, but original style uh, drum brakes and uh, original leaf springs. The one thing, when I pulled, as soon as I pulled the wheel off this side, I noticed, you probably started seeing it a little bit, Someone wrote something on top of that spring, and you could tell that is a brand new leaf. So it's a seven leaf setup. There's the seven leaves, but you could tell that top leaf had been replaced. So I bet you that top leaf had cracked or something happened to it at some point. Someone replaced it and um, left the rest of the leaves obviously the same, but that top one changed, and that's our culprit. That is why this side of the car is dipping anytime it's under load, under, under torque. So um, doesn't matter. I was going to replace these either way. Uh, obviously there was a problem at some point, um, which means the other side could have an issue at some point. So we're just going to swap them out and put these newer leaf springs in. So that's what we're dealing with here. Um, also, you could tell that the uh, curvature on the eyelid is a little bit different than what you see on the other side. And I'll show you the other side in a second. So that's what this side looks like. There's what the other side looks like. There's the seven leaf setup. You can see that this is original. Um, all the leaves look the same. They're all crusty about the same amount uh, with rust and undercoating or whatever else was sprayed on them. Another, obviously the drum. We got some interesting stuff going on up here with brake lines. I don't know what the heck someone was doing with this little curly cue. Apparently they don't know how to uh, cut this, but uh, we're going to get that taken care of. And obviously, and there's a little pinch right here too. You can see that pinch. There's one on the other side. So, got some brake line work to do. Not a big deal. End up replacing both of these lines uh, once this uh, is taken care of. Once the leaf springs are taken care of, you can see there's a two inch lowering block. They did that on either side too. I am going to leave that out when we put the new leaves in because they are supposed to be two inch lowering springs. So we'll get them in there and get the load on the car, let everything settle into place and uh, see what it looks like. And then if necessary, we could always add the blocks back in or some version of the blocks, maybe a, a uh, smaller block if we have to, to get it down to where it is. You can see there's the two blocks, the one on either side. Okay. So I got uh, my jack under here. I got a set of... Uh, uh, jack stands underneath the rear end just so that if anything does happen, it's secured. It's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to do one side at a time. Um, I would highly recommend that versus taking both sets of uh, springs out. That way, uh, one, it's safer. Two, you can keep the rear end in alignment. So I'm going to probably start on the passenger side here, get the torches out, cut those old rivets out, get that leaf dropped down, and then I'll get the new one in. And once that's all supported, I'll move over to the driver's side and then do the same thing. And then uh, we'll have a new set of leaf springs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbox the uh, new set of springs, 
and I will show you what we are getting ready to install. So this is the kit that we're putting on the car. It's from Chassis Engineering. Um, a bunch of different places make kits like this. Uh, this has everything that you need to replace the entire uh, rear suspension on the car. So one of the first things you're going to notice if you're familiar with these cars at all is the width of these uh, leaves in the back. On the uh, original setup on the car, the leaves are only an inch and three quarters wide, and there's seven of them obviously like I just said. On this one, these are two and a half inches wide, and it's a five leaf setup. So it's uh, with that width and the thickness of these, they are slightly thicker. Um, you can have a lower arch than what was originally on the car, which is one of the reasons why when you put these on you can get a, a lower stance out of it. But as you can see, the kit comes with everything you need. U-bolts, um, the new brackets, um, all your mounts, uh, shocks, and the, uh, the uh, cross support for the shocks. That's one thing I didn't mention before with this kit and with a lot of these kits, um, you want to replace these, the shocks and put this new support in place. That, uh, that the shocks will attach to because originally, which seems crazy, the shocks mounted right to the floor. So literally there were holes in the floor that go up into the trunk and um, I think it's right in the back of the trunk. Um, and the shocks just mount right there to the floor. So this is going to take the shocks and mount it to this cross brace and, uh, and it'll be just a better setup all the way around. One of the things you see is the, uh, the caution stickers. This bracket is, you know, quote, adjustable. It's only tacked. It's welded on this side, but it's only tacked on this side because if you need to adjust it side to side, you can just grind those tacks off, make a slight adjustment, and then just, um, just re-weld that. So we'll get that in there and uh, see if it needs to be adjusted, get it welded, and then we'll get all this painted so that uh, uh, it doesn't rust. We're going to hit it with just, for this car, we're just going to hit it with some zero rust, and uh, that'll be good to go. So uh, it's going to be under the car, it's just going to be all black and the Zero Rust will keep it sealed up and, uh, and that's that. So we're going to get the uh, old setup uh, cut off, mock this in place and then we'll see if we need to make an adjustment on that crossbar for the shocks and start putting this thing in. So I'm getting ready to take the passenger side leaf spring and the mounts and everything off. Wanted to make sure that I have everything laid out so here are the three new mounts that we'll be using from, like I said, that chassis engineering setup. So what you're going to have is your rear mount. This is going to be the rear leaf spring mount. The middle mount that uh, goes up underneath the middle of the spring and that the, uh, the U-bolts come down and clip into uh, or bolt through and then what the uh, new shock absorber is going to bolt to. And then this is your front mount. So this will be where the front uh, of the leaf spring mounts too. And it tells you in the instructions for this particular kit, there's a little teeny groove. You could kind of see it here, a notch. And there's one uh, right here on this side on the back. Those face towards the, uh, towards the rear end and towards the inside of the car. So this one's going to mount uh, just like that on the back of the car. And this one's going to mount like that on the front of the car. So those are the three pieces we need. Uh, here, I'll show you in a second here what we have going on. What we're going to do is we're going to remove, I already loosened most of these up. The uh, brackets underneath, all, we're going to take the bolts out of the, or the nuts out of the U-bolts. We're going to drop this old bracket out. We're going to take the um, uh, shock off. And then we're going to unbolt that front portion of the leaf spring. And then unbolt the rear portion. And we're going to drop the leaf out. So we're going to take these U-bolts out. And then the whole leaf spring is just going to drop out. Again, I have my jack stand under the rear end. The rear end is sitting on it right now, so that's not going to go anywhere. It's still connected to the drive shaft. It's still connected over to the driver's side, so it's going to keep everything centered and aligned. And we should be good to go. So we're going to get the leaf spring out. I'm going to get the torches. And we're going to cut the, uh, the uh, burn the rivets out and then get those holes cleaned up and get ready for the new mounts. You probably can see right here, I did find a section in this portion of the frame that is pretty crappy. So that's another little project here. I'm going to cut that out, weld a new piece in to stiffen that up, especially since it's right on uh, the edge of that crack is right above where the, uh, the leaf spring mounts. So I want to make sure that's nice and solid. The other side was fine. It looks like actually someone had already done the same thing, probably had the same problem, uh, but that's nice and solid. But this side definitely needs to be done. So I'm going to do that after I get everything cut out. And, um, and then hopefully it won't take too long to get this thing bolted in.
So I got the one leaf off and I thought I'd put it next to the new one so you could see the difference in these things. So remember I was saying how the one, the original one is an inch and three quarters and the new one is two and a half. So you can see right there there's a pretty big difference. But I mean just look at the, look at the arch of this thing. Um, that original one is crazy. The seven leaf setup is so huge but they had to because of the, uh, the compression and uh, how thin those, uh, those leaves were. And then you could see like how shallow this new one is. There's not even a whole lot of, uh, of arch to it. It's almost flat when it's in there. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting, uh, you might not notice it from here, but um, on the original one, the eyelets both curl in the same direction. And on the new one, the front one uh, curls up. This is upside down, obviously, but it'll go up just like the original one. But on the back, it's flipped. So on the, on the rear of the car, it's actually reversed. So between that the um, shallower depth of the rear leaf spring mount and then um, how shallow the uh, the arch is on these things it probably will drop at about two inches or so like it said so hopefully that's the case but uh, like I said I just want to show you the uh, the difference um, here I'll show you put a can of paint on it you can see like it's that that drastic so it's a pretty big difference so we're gonna get the uh, uh, mounts cut off and then we're gonna get this new one bolted on well, I got the mounts off, and as you can see on the floor, uh, there was all kinds of stuff up in the frame. Looks like some critters might have been living up in there at some point. There's a bunch of rust. And when I took the mount off, part of the frame came off with it. So uh, that, was, that was real nice. Should have been expected. It's not unusual for these cars for the, uh, anything of this age. The spot up in the frame that had the crack in it, yeah... We'll see here in a second when I get under here. Looks like that. So that is the whole back section of the frame that was right above the rear mount came off with it. Which means I have a lot more work to do. But again, I should expect this because this is what happens on these cars. Um, not just this 54, but uh, any car from back in the 40s, 50s, whatever, that has been sitting out or was a uh, Eastern car. Um, so... I'm going to get to uh, fixing this. I'm going to re-support this whole section, rebuild this section of the frame, and then we'll get back to putting the mounts in. Okay, okay go ahead, put the bolt in. Which hole? Right this hole? in this hole right here. Can I have these tapers? Yep. So it goes in that hole right there. Is that a hole? Yep, mm-hmm. Put it back in. Okay. Now what do we need these for? Okay, hold this, hold this. What do you need them for? That's what's going to hold this whole thing in place. And what's that? This is the back mount. Okay, so give me the little one. See, look, it goes over top like that. And then can you put that nut... Whoop. Can you put the nut on here? Like this? Yep, you need to screw it on. Wait, do you need to hold that? Go ahead, yeah. Can you screw it on? I can. I dropped it. Okay, good. <laughs> or you can hold the bracket and I'll screw it on. I'll hold it. Okay, just back here, hold it. Where'd that little nut go? Right behind you, right here. Okay. Okay, can I let go? Yeah. Okay, so that's gonna hold it? Mm hmm. It's gonna hold it in place for right now. Okay, hold on. 
Yep, I'll do this one. Okay, I got the front and the back mounts temporarily in place. Uh, you probably saw my little helper, Blake. He's my little guy. He's five. He loves coming down in the garage and helping me. Um, we got these in place. Again, they're just temporarily in place. Um, you probably just saw, though, I had to uh, reverse the um, uh, hanger here. I had it in from the back side, and then I have to put it in from the front side because um, since I had to re-weld most of this frame back here, there isn't enough room to re-drill the holes. I got one hole in for my mounting location, but I'm going to end up welding around most of this bracket, so it's not going to come back out. So I wanted to make sure that I had room on the back end uh, to, get the, um, uh, to get the nuts back on. If I would have put this in from the other side, I would have never been able to slide it out. At least now I can take it out. Uh, one of the things I also did was I put a little bit of uh, high temp grease on the uh, rubber just so that I don't get really any squeaking. It just sits in there and rotates. So I'm going to get um, the rear end jacked up right now because the arch of the new springs is a lot uh, shallower than the old ones. So I got to get the rear end up so that the springs can clear it. I'm going to get the back portion of the spring mounted. I'm going to wiggle the front portion in and then we're going to get ready to bolt it to the rear end. Okay, so one thing I just realized, um, on these new leaf springs, on the new setup, it actually pulls the leaves in a little bit further, a little closer to the center of the car than what the original uh, setup was. Um, part of it's because it's wider and part of it mostly is because of the front mount. So this front mount, if on the, I just looked on the other side, the old leaf springs, even though the mount was directly under the frame, rail itself, the uh, mounting point and the bolt locations were actually shifted out towards the outside of the frame where this one is directly centered on the frame so it brings the whole thing in so long and short of it is the rear end mounts the axle mount um, or the tubing mount they give you new ones with these sets the old ones I was hoping to just reuse uh, to keep everything keep it a little bit easier um, originally or eventually I was going to reposition the rear end because someone has it on the wrong angle so I guess I'm going to just have to do it both at the same time. So I'm going to end up cutting these old ones off and I'm just going to use the new ones that came with it and then mount it in the, uh, in the right spot. So I'm going to do that now again so I can get this whole side set since the other side hasn't been touched. And then when this side's done, I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. So it's a bit more involved than what I was hoping, but uh, again, it was something I had to do anyway. So just FYI, when you're getting ready to do it, you're most likely going to have to to, uh, to rechange the, uh, uh, this mounting point. Either use the new one or cut the old one out and slide it over and re-weld it in. So like I was saying, uh, I had to do a little welding in the back here, welded the rear portion of the rear mount uh, in place and actually one of the, 
the front inside frame rail piece of the mount in place. But it's in. Uh, not the prettiest thing. I'll grind it down clean it up a little bit, but uh, it is solid, so that is in there. And uh, the front mount is bolted in place. That is done. And the biggest thing, like I was just saying, was these U-bolts and then the bracket or the mount for the, uh, the rear end. I had to cut that old one out. And you can see, uh, you might be able to see right here where my finger is. That was the inside of the old mount, and here was the outside. So this, I mean, that's how far off it is. It was a good inch and a half or so in. So this one is the new one. It's just resting in there right now. I do have the U-bolts uh, uh, finger tight or hand tight in there. So everything is centered front to back and side to side the way that it should. But uh, I'm going to wait until I get the other side done because, like I said, I have to adjust the rear end angle. Someone had it up way, way too high. It should be within like three degrees top or bottom. Um, and it was way out of that, um, so I'm going to have that adjusted. So once I get the other side done, I'll rotate the whole rear end, and then I'll uh, I'll take one side apart at a time and weld those mounts in, and uh, we'll be good to go. It'll actually fix two things on this car, and then I'll do those uh, brake lines after that. But this side is done. I'm going to get the exhaust back up in, uh, get a little bit of zero rust on these welds, and then move over to the other side.
Okay, so there you go. There is both sides of the leaf springs. It was a complete pain in the butt, but these cars always are. Um, all four mounts are in place. The rear end is set, um, well, set side to side. <clears throat> I actually, set front to back, I should say. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the whole car down. I'm going to clean all this up. I'm going to get the car down, <clears throat> make sure everything is sitting level in the way that it should be sitting, and I'm going to uh, get an angle on the, um, on the uh, pinion on the rear end, get that set where I want it to be, lift everything back up. I'll re-weld or I'll weld the, uh, the two mounts on either side, and that will be done. As you guys probably saw, <clears throat> I wasn't thinking about this, the exhaust now is not going to fit because these leaf springs sit in further than, um, than the original ones. So the exhaust was tucked in perfectly between the leaf spring and the fuel tank on this side and the leaf spring and the spare tire mount on the other side or the spare tire uh, uh, valley. Um, so I'm probably going to have to cut the exhaust and redo it, which is a shame because someone actually did a really nice job bending this whole thing up. Um, but whatever, that's what's going to happen. So going to get this down, get the angle set on the rear end, get it up, get it welded, and then fix the exhaust, and we're done. Long, long project, but uh, it'll be worth it once it's back on the road. Okay, here are the two guys who helped me on these cars, Blake and Kobe. I helped him with the rear suspension. You did, you helped me with the rear suspension. Good job on and that. And I give the opinion. And Kobe gives a lot of opinions. He likes to ride in the cars. Sometimes he comes down and works on them, but Blake, definitely you can see his tool belt, his welding helmet. He likes to come down. So I think That's he might be a future mechanic. So um, those are the guys that helped me with it. I'm going to show you the, what happened, how the car turned out here in a second. So here's the car back on the ground after the leaf springs, the rear leaf springs were replaced. Uh, it does have a slight rake to it now. So the uh, back of the car right down in this area from the ground to the top of the rocker panel right in front of the rear wheel was about eight and a half inches of clearance before we did this and now it's about ten and a half so it came about two inches but in the instructions for the uh, the chassis engineering leaf spring set it said uh, drive about 500 miles put about 500 miles on the car and the uh, leaf springs could settle up to an inch or so so i'm not going to do anything with the uh, lowering blocks right now I'm going to drive it a little bit, uh, get some miles under it, see if it settles into place. And if it does, if it comes down an inch or so, that'll be about perfect because it'll have just a teeny, teeny bit of a rake to it. Um, and if not, then I'll cut those old lowering blocks down and maybe uh, throw an inch in there just to get it back down a little bit more. Because um, uh, I'd like to get it pretty close to looking level, maybe maybe a slight rake to it. So, um, yeah, that's what it looks like from the side. We'll get underneath the uh, back here and you can see what the leaf springs look like from the underside. So not, not that it's anything that great to look like, but there's what the finished product looked like. Uh, in place, you can see the bolts uh, that replaced the original steel rivets that were a complete pain in the butt to get out. Um, and then I'll try to zoom in, you can see there. Again, nothing crazy, just showing the leaf spring bolted around the uh, rear end, around the, the tubing. There's no uh, lowering blocks right now, um, but that's what it looks like. And we'll see if we can get a quick shot of the underside of the car here. Um, can't see a whole lot because the exhaust had to get dropped down a little bit. It's in the way, but uh, yeah, there's the one side and there is the other side over there. Um, and that's it. So that's what it looks like afterwards. Uh, bolted in the front, bolted in the back. Uh, took about, uh, it was a good weekend. Took a good weekend. If the rivets would have come out uh, easily, it wouldn't have been that bad of a job, but getting those rivets out and then having to fix part of the frame on the passenger side that was all rusted took uh, a good half of a day by itself. So, uh, and then I had to do some work on the exhaust to get it, uh, to get it back in place. But um, there you go. Uh, just took it for the first ride and it is great. Um, it's such a different suspension in the back. It feels like a normal car. It uh, bounces a little bit, but doesn't slam anymore and uh, it's a much smoother ride so definitely worth the effort um, I would highly recommend doing this so uh, if you like what you saw today subscribe to our channel we appreciate that we'll be shooting more videos and if you have any other questions let us know uh, get in touch with us or if you have any suggestions on other things you'd like to see in more detail definitely let us know thanks for watching